Welcome back guys to our next tutorial for making Half-Life maps in Jack. Last time we did point-based entities and today we'll be doing brush-based entities. Uh, real quick, I just want to go ahead and clean up some of these leftovers here. Remove that air tank. I'm just going to remove, remove this suit closer to the starting point so you sort of pick that up when you start right away. Okay, and let's move these, let's delete these zombies here so we don't have to deal with them. So what is a brushed based entity? So a brush based entity is anything that's made out of geometry that is set to an entity. For example, could be a door or a ladder, something that's in the level that's made of blocks. What I want to start with, I'm going to make one of these little fire fire alarms here. So I'm going to grab this, this red color from the generic section. And let's go over here to the second room. Lower the grid. And I'm just going to draw a block on the wall here. I'll tidy up the shape, but let's just go ahead and create that. So all sides are red, but on the front, I'm going to apply this texture of the fire alarm itself. I'm going to just shrink it down to the size of that texture. Okay. In fact, we can even cut off some of the side of the blank red area. So I'm going to shrink the grid one more time and move these in. That's good enough. So we have a little fire alarm. I'm not going to make it do anything, but it's just a demonstration. So we're going to first work with an entity called Funk Wall. And what that is, it doesn't really have too much going on with it, but we can make, you can use a Funk Wall to make transparent glass or anything with a mask a masked texture, which is like the ones we saw that start with the open bracket, so like ladders and fences, for example, and that will allow us to remove the blue. But a lot of times we just want to use the funk wall for fixtures, like, lamp, like uh, ceiling lamps or little things like this fire alarm. And you might ask, why would we want to do that when we can just, you know, the block is already a wall. Well, what it does is it's going to increase performance. Now, on modern computers, probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but it's good practice. And I'll show you what, what this is going to look like in rendering. So you see we have a solid wall, and then we have this block here. So I'm just going to stretch it back through the wall and use this carve tool just for demonstration purposes here. Now you can see we have four walls. So these walls or faces will will appear when when it goes to when it goes to compile it's going to chop this block up based on anything that's touching it like this. More like this. Whereas if we set this to an entity and I'll and I'll reverse it here. What's going to happen is when the map goes to render in game, it's going to first just draw the original level geometry and then slap this on instead of four smaller faces. So that's kind of why it's a good habit to, to, to use Funk Wall for, for fixtures and various smaller things that are more decorative. So how we set this to a brush base entity is we just click it and click over here on the right and we go to two entity. And now this becomes a funk wall. We can make our changes if needed. Close. And you notice, you'll see over here now that our fire alarm is in, perp is in a magenta color. And it will display the entity name below. If you, wanted to, if you decided you don't want it to be an entity, you can click on To World. And now it's back to regular geometry. Now you can click on To Entity if you want. What I do is Control T, 
and it has the same effect. So with Funk Wall, there's some render mode options here. So we have render effects. A lot of entities have render effects, render mode, FX amount, FX color. And if we were going to make transparent glass or using a texture with a mass texture, uh, that's where we'd come in here and change the render mode. And we'll look into that in detail later. For Funk Wall, the only flag present is not in deathmatch. So if we check, uh, check that and load it up in as a deathmatch level, as a multiplayer, then this fire alarm would not appear. So now that we know how to do that, let's go ahead and make some lights, some actual light fixtures. Because I really don't like just lights that are generating out of nowhere. I kind of want to create a light for it. So let's, um, I'm going to start with a steel color. So there's a texture called steel. All right, and let's pan out to the, where the light is. I'm going to draw a block. And it's down here, so I'm going to move it up. About right here is fine. Actually, let's do that. Create object. Let's look. Get a look at it from below here. Now let's get our light. So I'm going to put in the tilde, which is most of the lights. I'm going to use this big 50s light here, fluorescent light. Apply the texture here. And um, what we can do, I'll show you the hard way to do it. <laughs> Stretch this out. Okay. I'm just moving this to fit the light texture here. We're going to look at some easier ways to do this later. But as you can see, I'm just fitting it to the texture. One more. Okay. And we have this this texture lock. This TL is for texture lock, so it's going to stay like that wherever I move it. I'm going to rotate it a bit. Let's make it a little shorter. Let's move the light down. And bring it down. A little, about right there is good. So now we have a light. And you could even make it smaller if you wanted, shorter, might be better. I'm going to grab that steel texture again, go back to the block, and we can even make a stem for it. Okay, let's get a look at that. If I wanted to make the stem a little skinnier, I could reduce the grid size. Move it to the middle. There we go. Put the grid back. Okay. We've built the light fixture and we want to turn it into a, a funk wall. I've selected both. Control T to bring up to set it to an entity. I have it defaulting to funk wall. If you were going to change it to something else, you would just obviously come in here and change it. So but we're going to keep it funk wall and click out. So now when I click on this, when I click on one of the blocks, you can see they're grouped together. If I were to stretch them, it would keep its proportions like that. But let's say I wanted to modify just the bottom part. We can come over here to this IG icon. Let's ignore grouping. And now it's going to continue to be a funk wall, but I can m manipulate parts of it here. So let's say we wanted to make this a little taller. We're done there. And then we can un uncheck ignore grouping and you can see it's still still uh, still together as one entity. So why don't we build another one over here for this yellow light. Okay, and I pressed control E and that centered me right onto my selection. So that's that's convenient. So I can click on this info node, for example, and control E, I go right to it. 
but let's work on this light here. And it looks like it might not be in the center of the room, so we'll just center that. And I noticed when I ran the map that the light wasn't as bright as I wanted it in this room, so I'm going to do a alt enter on this. Oops, let's try that again. alt enter on the light. Go to brightness. Crank up this number, this last number, the brightness. So i put that to 300, so that'll be brighter in-game. Okay. Now, um, let's stick with the steel for now. And I'm going to make, like, a different shape light, and you'll see what we're doing here in a minute. So I'm going to grab a cylinder. Draw it about this size. Excuse me, I actually want a spike. And from the top, I'm going to create object. And we have this spike here. Oops. Okay, so something to know about this. Um, the point of the spike is always going to be in the 2D view that you created it. So let's delete that and I'll show you what I mean here. So we're going to, this time I'm going to do it from the side view and create. Now you see that the spike is pointed to the side. Um, so I, I want to make uh, something a little more rounder than this. So let's do uh, 9 and see how that looks. Again, from the top. There we go. I wanted like a cone shape. Okay. All right, now I notice the light bulb needs to be moved out of the way. There we go. Okay, and going into the textures, and I'm going to find this gym light here. There we go. I'm going to apply that to the bottom. All right, and I'm just going to do fit on this justify panel here. And that's going to fit it right to the circle I've created. Well, let's see if we can bring this up a little bit. See what I'm going for here? Okay. But I'm going to grab the steel. Build a block coming from the top of it. And I want to get it to the right size here. It's going to be a stem for this light. And you notice the corners are actually above the cone, so well, I'm just going to bring it down like this so that there's no extra edges. Oops, and I can't, don't forget to change it back to block. Create, there we go. And now we have a little light fixture in here. So I'm going to again select both, control T. Now it's set to a wall. And I think that's good enough for now. And let's move this up a little bit. There we go. And now we have some funk walls. And that's how you create brush base entities. And specifically, we were looking at funk walls. So we can go ahead and run this and see what that looks like. Okay, we've got a bright, brighter light. As well as our fixtures. Now let's see what this would look like if we set it back to an, a world brush. Now we've removed the entity and let's load it up again. All right, now you see we have this black spot behind it because the light's not able to reach that. So that's actually one of the drawbacks of using a funk wall is that the light was rendered on the surface before the before the fixture was, was put into place. So I kind of like it like this. So what we can do is set those two lights back to world geometry if we want to. And that's about it. Thanks.